Hello, welcome back. This is the final video for Chapter 5, Light and Matter, and this is Part 8, Learning from Light, the Doppler Effect. With the Doppler effects, I first want you to think about if you've ever heard a, uh, a horn blasting from a car that is driving by, or perhaps an ambulance siren that's driving by, or maybe the ice cream truck going down the road with the music playing. Sometimes it sounds like it's going up in pitch. Sometimes it sounds like it's going down in pitch. And this is what's known as the Doppler effect. And we hear this with sound waves. So let's take a look at this picture down below. There is a train and standing in front of the train is one person and standing behind the train is another person. Now the train is not moving. So the train has a, uh, a horn and it's blowing a particular frequency of sound waves, which is perceived by our ears to be a certain musical pitch. And the, if the train is not moving, the person behind the train hears the pitch that the train is giving off. And it's the same pitch that the person in front of the train is hearing. They all hear the same pitch because they're, all, they're both receiving the same frequency of sound. So the whistle sounds the same no matter where you stand near a stationary train. Now let's have the train move to the right. While the train is giving off the same frequency of sound waves, it will be perceived differently between the person that the train is moving towards and the person that the train is moving away from. Behind the train, sound waves stretch to longer wavelengths. And longer wavelengths, remember that means a lower frequency, and our ears will interpret that as a lower pitch. So if the train is moving away, the sound, the, the pitch of the horn sounds lower. But if the train is moving towards you, in front of the train, sound waves bunch up to shorter wavelengths. Higher frequency is perceived as a higher pitch. So for a moving train, the sound you hear depends on whether the train is moving toward you or away from you. And this is a good illustration right here. You can just imagine these wavelengths as the train is moving away. Yeah, it's not completely accurate, but it's a good visualization here. Imagine that it stretches out the waves behind the train and it squishes together the waves in front of the train. And remember, shorter wavelength means higher frequency, longer wavelength means lower frequency. Now in space, we don't deal with sound waves, but we do deal with electromagnetic waves, otherwise known as light. So let's look at this light bulb between these two people. Now, practically speaking, you're never going to observe this with your eyes with a light bulb because the light bulb, in order for this to work, has to be moving at an appreciable uh, fraction of the speed of light and you have to have very sensitive measuring equipment. But let's go with the illustration anyway. Just like the train, the light bulb is moving towards the person on the right. And the light bulb, while it gives out waves in all different directions, its waves will be squished together in the direction that it's moving. And so this person will perceive shorter wavelengths, which means higher frequency. And the person that the light is moving away from will perceive longer wavelengths, which is lower frequency. So the light source is moving away from this person, so the light appears redder. And for this person, the light appears bluer. Now notice that the illustrator has drawn red and drawn blue and even put them wearing red and blue just to uh, give you a, a visual to remember. It's not that the light is actually red on this side or actually blue on this side, but the terminology that we use when we talk about the shifting of light uh, we've just come to say that it becomes redder. And it doesn't mean that the color is actually red. For light to become redder in the astronomical context really just means that it goes to a longer wavelength. So in fact, if the light were ultra, I'm sorry, if the light were infrared and we say it becomes redder, well, that could be a bit confusing because when we say for light to become redder, it means to go to a lower frequency. That means that the infrared would shift into radio instead of into red, which would be a higher frequency. So we say that the light is red shifted 
if the wavelengths are pulled out, and we say that the light is blue shifted if the wavelengths are shortened. Now the degree of red shifting or blue shifting is related to the speed of the object. So with a, a siren of a, an ambulance or a horn from a car, the faster the vehicle is moving, the more pronounced the shift, it's gonna to go to a higher pitch or a lower pitch, whether it's coming towards us or away from us. Now, when we think about light from stars or galaxies, things up in the heavens, let's look what happens and how their speed relative to us shifts the light in this Doppler effect. So let's say we have an object out there and based on its elements, it's giving us these three lines. Now, practically speaking, there'll be more lines than that, but for purposes of this illustration, we're just gonna concentrate on these three lines, the blue, the green, and the orange, the orangey red. Now, let's say that the object is moving away from us. Every one of those lines is going to be red shifted. Notice the vocabulary word, red shift can be a noun or a verb. We can say that it experiences a red shift. We can also say that it is red shifted. But red shift means that it goes from a high frequency to a lower frequency. So the blue line goes more a bit towards the green, the green goes a bit towards the yellow, and the orangey red goes more towards the red. You can see that the lines are still in the same pattern. They've all just been shifted a little bit. The wavelengths have been increased a little bit. Now let's say that the object is moving even faster away from us. Faster means that there's gonna be a greater degree of red shifting. So what used to be a blue line is now green. What used to be a green line is now yellow. What used to be orange is now red. But notice they all stay in the same pattern. So astronomers who study the spectra of objects in space would recognize these lines, but see that they're really just these lines, but they've all been shifted the same amount. So they would recognize, let's say that these are helium lines, for example. They would say, oh, this is the pattern we recognize of helium lines, but they've all been shifted, maybe 30 or 40 nanometers, something like that. Now, let's take this same object and have it move towards us. Well, moving towards us means all of these spectral lines are gonna to go to a higher frequency, shorter wavelength. So the blue becomes a bit more towards indigo, the green goes more towards the bluish, and the reddish orange becomes more orange. And if the object is moving even faster, then the blue shift is more pronounced. What used to be blue is now purple. What used to be green is now blue. What used to be reddish orange is now orange. And so astronomers can see the amount of shift in those lines. They know what the lines should be, what they really are because of, of the elements uh, that give off those different patterns of lines. They see how much it's been shifted and astronomers can actually calculate how fast something is either moving towards us or away from us. Now this is how Edwin Hubble in the 1920s, he discovered that most galaxies beyond our local cluster, most galaxies are moving away from us. And he could determine the speeds that they're moving away from us. The amount of blue shift or red shift tells us an object's speed toward or away from us. And I want you to remember, it's just these two words, blue shift, if it's moving toward us because it goes to a higher frequency, red shift is moving away from us because it goes to a lower frequency. There are no other colors with vocabulary words here. There's no green shift or yellow shift or anything. Just blue shift goes higher frequency, red shift is lower frequency. One limitation of this, the Doppler shift tells us only about the part of an object's motion that is toward or away from us in a direct line. So let's look at these three stars that are moving relative to the Earth. There's the Earth, the observer, and here's star number one. Star one is moving directly away from us. 
So the Doppler shift tells us it's full speed. Now you look at number two, it's not moving towards us or away from us. And so there's not gonna be any Doppler shift. Star two is moving across our line of sight, but not toward or away from us. So the Doppler shift measures no speed at all. So this example shows us a good limitation of the Doppler shift. It doesn't tell us the speed of an object. All it can tell us is the speed that an object is moving either in direct line towards us or away from us. Stars number one and number two are extreme examples. Number one is on the good extreme where it's got direct line motion away from us. Number two is on the bad end of the extreme, bad in terms of being able to use the Doppler effect in that it's got no motion towards or away from us. But the reality is that most objects in space are going to have some combination of those. So look at star three, it's moving in the direction of this red line and it has some of, one component of its motion is moving away from us, but another component is moving across our line of sight. So star three is moving diagonally away from us. The Doppler shift tells us the part of the star's speed away from us, but not the part of the speed across our line of sight. So to determine its speed, uh, then you have to get into a bit of trigonometry there. Let's consider this thought question. I measure a spectral line in the lab at 500.7 nanometers. Now that means that when we say in the lab, it means there's this source of light and it's not moving towards us or away from us. We're all just sitting still in the laboratory. It's a 500.7 nanometer wavelength. The same line in a star has a wavelength of 502.8 nanometers. What can I say about this star? And you think it's 500.7 nanometers, but I'm perceiving it as 502.8 nanometers, which means I'm perceiving a longer wavelength. It's being redshifted. And that means the star is moving away from me. If it had gone to a shorter wavelength, that would mean the star is moving toward me. Another thing the Doppler effect can tell us is the rotation rate of an object, such as a galaxy or a star. So here we have a spectral line from star A is narrow, and there's a particular line, wavelength, and the intensity, because light from different parts is shifted only slightly from the center. But let's say star B is rotating. A spectral line is broad because light from different parts is shifted farther from the center. Now what that means is, let's say there's a star and you're picturing it, uh, if it's rotating it, let's say the left side is coming towards you and the right side is going away from you. Well, that means that all the lines on the left side of the star are going to be blue shifted because it's coming towards you. All the light from the right side of the star, as you're looking at it, since it's moving away from you, they will be red shifted. And the faster the star is rotating, the more you're going to get those extremes uh, from the center of the star, which doesn't shift at all, to the edges of the star, which are going the fastest, and everything in between. So the gist of this is that the faster that the thing, in this case a star, is rotating, the broader the line. So it's no longer a spectral line, but rather it's a smear, it's a broad region. So different Doppler shifts from different sides of a rotating object spread out its spectral lines. And here we have a visual representation. Star A is rotating slowly so that on this side, a little bit of blue shifting, on this side, a little bit of red shifting as it's moving away, but star B is rotating faster, and so you're gonna get more of that shifting. So a spectral line that we expect is gonna be when it's rotating not too quickly, it's gonna be spread out a little bit. When it's rotating quickly, it's gonna be spread out a lot. And astronomers can look at the spread of the spectral line and calculate how fast the thing is rotating. That is the end of part eight, learning from light, the Doppler effect. And that's also the end of chapter five.
light and matter, reading messages from the cosmos. Have a great day.